So on paper, the Lee & Lee TU150 is the compact case that a lot of you have been waiting for. Affordable, premium, with big cooling potential. Overall, this is a solid offering from Lee & Lee. So let's dive into the TU150, check out cooling, and whether or not this is the case for your ITX build. So as always, let's start off with a size comparison, and this might disappoint a few of you as it did me initially. The fact is the TU150 is not really a small form factor case at all. It's definitely an ITX case, just not under the 20 liter cutoff. If you were expecting the TU150 to be a more affordable version of the N-Case M1, you're going to be very disappointed because these are two completely different cases. In fact, the TU150 is a lot closer to the NZXT H210, both in volume and footprint. Although the TU150 hits a nice price point of 109 US dollars, it comes in at 23.7 liters in volume, which is almost double that of the NKS M1, and just 3.5 liters less than the NZXT H210. That's a case that offers big support for AIOs and large tower coolers at a price point of just $89. So there is stiff competition from NZXT. Now the reason that I'm making a strong comparison against the NKS M1 as well is that for one, they look very similar, and because Lee and Lee actually do the manufacturing for the N-Case M1. That's why the aluminium panels look identical, available in both silver and black by the way. They're also using the same toaster feet that I've never been a fan of, and also the same push pin mechanism for the side panels which does secure things nicely. The feet also have spaces built in to elevate the case further off of the ground, and while this may help with airflow for the bottom intake fans, I personally don't like the overall stance that this gives the enclosure. I found that the 3D printed N-Case M1 feet that I designed do fit nicely here as well, giving the TU150 a lower profile look. You can find a link to those case feet in the description. The tempered glass side panel has been done really well, and the top perimeter has been blacked out to hide the SFX power supply, which is mounted towards the top right of the case. You also have a collapsible handle at the top, which does support the entire case quite well, and is mounted directly to the frame. The top panel is completely blocked off and just reserved for cable management. Personally, I would have preferred this panel to be used for improved ventilation ventilation instead. IO is located at the top here as well, featuring USB Type-C, but the power button on my sample feels unfortunately cheap and rattles around. For air intake, the front panel does have a quite large gap at the bottom for air to be pulled in by a 120mm fan, and below the GPU we're able to fit two 120mm fans quite comfortably, just like the N-Case M1. So radiator placement and water cooling support for a case of this size is honestly lacking a little. There's no 240mm AIO support that you'll find in the NCASE M1, just a slot for a single 120mm AIO at the rear. When I saw this case at Computex, I initially thought that a dual 120mm AIO configuration was possible, but unfortunately the fan slot at the front of the case is positioned too high towards the power supply, so although a 120mm fan will fit, a radiator will not. That's okay though, because the big focus when it comes to cooling in the TU150 is the fact that it can accommodate truly big heatsinks for the CPU. Just like the NZXT H210, the TU150 can fit Noctua's monstrous NHD15. With CPU cooler clearances topping out at 165 millimeters, you have some seriously big options that you can fit into this case. It's just a shame that you won't be able to use a large tower cooler in the TU150 along with a hybrid cooled GPU. That's something that is possible on the NZ. XT H210. Storage is pretty straightforward. You can fit a 2.5 inch drive to the right of the motherboard and then a 2.5 inch or 3.5 inch drive on the roof of the case next to the power supply. There are plenty of cutouts in the motherboard for routing your cables, but I found that if you are using an SFX power supply, your cables likely aren't going to be long enough to be routed through them. And graphics cards up to three slots will fit here at a length of 320 millimeters, but if you are using the bottom two fan slots, that's going to be restricted to around 2.2 slots. Two slot cards will have some room underneath them even if the fans are installed below them. The graphics card won't sit directly on top of the fans like it will in the NCASE M1. Now let's talk about the thermals. So starting with the CPU thermals with our 9900K, the Lee & Lee TU150 is giving us a very strong performance. Despite the TU150 being mostly closed off, it's able to brute force its way to the top end of the stack by leveraging the NHD15. 
The NCASE M1 still keeps the top result though, and if the TU-150 was better ventilated, then it would have easily been able to beat this result, as would the Silverstone LD-03 when using the NHU-12A. For the GPU, things are looking pretty okay here too. We're seeing the 1080 Ti at 69 degrees C, which is 4 degrees over what you'll see on an open test bench. Again, not as good as the well-ventilated NCASE M1, but overall a pretty decent result. So where does this put the Lee & Lee TU-150? Well, for 109 US dollars, I think a lot of you are going to be pretty happy with this enclosure for your ITX system. It's not as space optimized or airflow optimized as something like the NCASE M1 or Ghost S1, but it's also not as expensive, and I also anticipate that it's going to be a lot more readily available to buy. One question that has stuck with me throughout the testing of the TU-150 though is, would I necessarily recommend this over the NZXT H210? That case has a lot more potential when it comes to radiator clearances and cooling, so if you potentially want to do a dual AIO build for your CPU and GPU, you could do that in the NZXT and easily outperform the overall thermal performance that you would get in the TU150. The H210 is also a little cheaper with the downside that it's not as portable because it's about 15% larger and it does lack the handle that the TU150 does have. Between those two cases, I will have to let you guys decide. It really depends on what system you are putting inside these cases. For the TU-150 though, it definitely gets my recommendation overall for an ITX system that isn't sweating the details when it comes to space optimization and airflow optimization and things like that. If you're not sweating that sort of stuff, then the TU-150 is definitely appropriate. It does offer the aluminium and tempered glass aesthetic that so many people have been waiting for at an affordable price point. So guys, I would love to know your thoughts down below on the Lee & Lee TU-150. Will you be building in this case? What do you guys think of the handle? Do you think that's actually a feature that you guys would use? Personally, I think this is going to be more suited to a desktop system. It's not really super portable as it is advertised and marketed as. Uh, also, I have checked stock on Amazon and Newegg, and it looks like they're going to be coming in stock in about a month. So definitely check out those links down below, but just keep in mind that overall shelf stock doesn't seem to be hitting until late next month. As always, guys, a huge thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one.